In our first story, the Ghana News Agency reports that oil marketing companies as OMCs for many of us, they've reduced the retail prices of petroleum products at the mid-October review period, pegging super, uh, what many of you call petrol, between uh, 2.859 Ghana cities. And, uh, well, we have also 2.82 Ghana cities, whilst the price of diesel is fixed between 2.769 Ghana cities and 2.720 Ghana cities. The prices review of petroleum product is in conformity with the partial deregulation of petroleum product, which took effect from June 16. I will take you to the Ashanti region where drama unfolded in Kumasi when a businesswoman at Magazine, a commercial suburb of the Ashanti regional capital, challenged officials of the Ghana Revenue Authority from carrying out their duties when they approached and questioned her on why she had refused to honor her tax obligations since 2008. The woman wants the public officials to take back the Wayome judgment debt before they could come to her. Oh, here in Accra, residents of Sukura and Ajenin communities, they vow to resist any attempt by the Accra Metropolitan Assembly to give unfamiliar names to the streets in their communities. Youth in the area have vandalized some of the signages in protest against what they described as a strange names given to streets in their community. Residents in this community are united against the Accra Metropolitan Assembly as far as the nationwide street naming exercise is concerned. They had high hopes when the street naming exercise began, expecting that Accra Metropolitan Assembly would use the names they had recommended. To their disappointment, the AMA surprised them with names they are not familiar with. On Wednesday, the youth group took the law into their own hands by vandalizing some of the signages in protest against the AMA. The youth seem to have the backing of the chiefs and opinion leaders in the community. We went to our conference house. There was an exhibition at the International Conference Center on the street naming exercise where we first identified the anomaly. So we prompted the assembly and we were hopeful they were going to change it. It therefore surprises me they've gone ahead to mount the same names on the streets. That is why the youth in this community protested on that very day. We'll pursue it, you see, because, you see, uh, my brother, it will be very, very painful. In the 50s, where here is no go area for anybody, where you have lions, wolves, big, big snakes and things like that, it is these people who, who ventured to stay here, you understand? And they were used to drive, uh, you know, the enemies of the stool, uh, the stool away. And so the first name, the first chief of Sukura, known as Abdullahi Atia, at least if they are given street name in Sukura, that person, the name should appear. Assembly member of the community says the assembly should take a second look at the naming exercise in the area. We only had opportunity to meet about two names out of the lots that we sent to them. So we drew their attention again that no, still there are mistakes. Uh, we will not take it lightly. And then the town and com uh, country director uh, was even elected. And then he agreed that they were going to do the necessary correction, only to hear again that this is what they are finally come, come to mount. So I will not blame the youth so much. It was a reaction. So we are hoping that this reaction alone would have drawn their attention, that wrong thing has been done, so therefore correction must also be done. The residents say they would hold a general meeting in the community on Thursday to determine the next line of action. Latifi Dries, Sukura, Accra. 
One of the judges implicated in the judicial corruption scandal unearthed by investigative journalist Anaz Aremi Yawanaz is on the verge of being declared a wanted man. Justice Ajit Nassam has failed to honor invitations to appear before the committee investigating the matter, prompting the publication of a newspaper advert inviting him to appear before the committee on Thursday. Malik Abbas Dabu has been following the story and had a chat with Israel during the Prime News. Himself, among six other um, high court judges, were suspended because prima facie evidence was established against them that there was some wrongdoing and they had questions to answer. So he failed to turn up by this committee. Now, this is a notice put out by the committee, and the notice is addressed to him. Uh, His Lordship Justice John Ajat Nassam. You are hereby invited that, uh, you are hereby notified that following the prima facie case established against you on allegations of misconduct for one, ex party discussions with one party on a case pending before you, contrary to Rule 3 7 and 4, Rule 4A of the Code of Conduct for, justice, um, for Judges and Magistrates, uh, two, bribery and corruption contrary to section 244 of the Criminal Offences Act and rule, rule 2 of the Code of Conduct for Judges and Magistrates and the establishment of the committee to investigate the alleged misconduct, you are to appear before the said committee on Thursday 22nd October 2015 when the matter will come on for hearing at the conference room of the Administrative Block Judicial Service Accra at 10 a.m. Now this is where it gets tricky. They proceed to say you are to note that the committee will proceed on its work if you fail to appear on the said date. You know that there is a, a legal maxim that says that you cannot condemn a man until you have heard him. Yeah. What this notice is saying is that if he fails to turn up, he would have automatically waived his right to be heard. Essentially and tried in absentia. Preci precisely. So to that extent, the committee will go ahead and hear his case and determine his fate regardless of whether he comes or not. Do you know if this will be his first appearance before the committee or he's made previous appearances? We, we do not know. Um, we do know that there were rumors when the story broke that he sent a resignation letter to the Chief Justice, which was rejected. The Chief it appears the transition from Accra's old courthouse to the new court complex is currently distorting judicial business at the court. Barely two weeks after the inauguration of the ultra-modern edifice, Join News Latif Idris reports clients have had to deal with untraceable dockets and issuance of hearing notices at their own cost. Clients and lawyers who conduct business at the court complex were optimistic of improved services when the sophisticated edifice was inaugurated by President Mahama and the Chief Justice two weeks ago. Many of them have, however, been disappointed as they have for the past few weeks been mostly dealing with challenges associated with the transition. Apart from the challenges involved in navigating the complex to find the courtrooms where their cases are being heard, finding their dockets has also been a headache. I mean, like... I came here early in the morning, almost 8 o'clock. Since morning that I came, I haven't been able to trace any of my dockets. Yes. Uh, I mean, I have searched with search everywhere. So I'm going back to the office. I wasted almost all, all the working hours here. And it's, it's, it's exhausting. I mean, I am fed up. I mean, they. It's very hectic over there. The masses are complaining. Yesterday, for instance, some were here to do filings. They had to be in queues for barely four or five hours, yet they were not able to even get the processes filed. We think it's a good thing anyway, but it will take time for the masses to get used to the system. So for now, it is very, very stressful, very, very uncomfortable, but we will get there. Some lawyers are taking the flag from their clients for the missing dockets. A situation lawyer Kojoga Adawudu says is quite uncomfortable. He says court business is being affected. As a practitioner who goes to court almost every day, um, I believe that the transition has been tortuous, it's been a bit slow uh, because the courts, most of them has been redesignated and before, let's, uh, it's been redesignated so until you know the redesignated court where your case is pending, you might not know the court to get to. 
sometimes you get to some of the court before you get to know the appropriate court that the case is pending, you might be late. Some judges have been assigned different rules, some have been transferred, others have been brought in. So um, most of the old cases, they are yet to be assigned. Administrator of the court complex who declined to speak on camera said they are working to resolve the problem. With every transition, there are operational difficulties and um, we are working hard to resolve those difficulties. So we are appealing to all our court users to be patient. We have all the records. We will assign them to the appropriate courts and they will be notified accordingly. So is this affecting, I mean, the hearing of cases in any way? What we um, have currently is that because some of the records have not been placed before the courts, they would not know where their dockets would be. But once all the assignment is completed, everybody would be satisfied. Until the challenge is resolved by administrators of the courts, clients and lawyers would have to cope with the slow pace of justice delivery, despite the splashy new law court complex. The Alliance for Accountable Governance has accused the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission, the PRC, of being controlled by government. The pressure group also claims the PRC has failed to work in the interest of Ghanaians. Afak says the action of PRC proves it rather listens to government than the cry of the ordinary Ghanaian. Well, these charges come as the Commission consults Ghanaians on proposed tariff adjustments of over 100%. This hopeless situation has been compounded by the presence of an insensitive, a very corrupt and directionless Public Utilities Regulatory Commission, PURC. Fellow Ghanaians, considering the mandate of the PURC to build a credible and sustainable utility regulatory regime that protects stakeholders' interest, it is clear that the PURC is least inter in interested in protecting the public with respect to the quality of utility services and pricing. Indeed, the PURC has lost focus on its core mandate and merely reduced to an oppressive, oppressive tool for increasing utility tariff. This development tends to benefit service providers and government, but without value for money to consumers. PURC is now Government Utility Regulatory Commission. There's no public value to PURC. On the 1st of July 2015, the PURC reviewed electricity and water tariffs with an increase of 51.73% for electricity and 15% for water. The explanation given was the same old refrain, that consumers should pay more in order to improve the quality of services delivered. However, the services of both electricity and water got west off. Interestingly, barely three months after July increase, the Ghana Water Company Limited is seeking another 124% increment, while the ECG, on the other hand, is seeking 101% increase. This is complete ripoff and sheer economic enslavement sponsored by an overly corrupt, inept, and a broke government. As a group, we resolve that we must rise up and resist any form of increase in tariff by the PRC on the utility services. Things are falling apart. The TUC is toothless and probably compromised. The ability to engage in transactions and make payments without being physically present, as happens online, has enabled many businesses around the world to enjoy massive growth literally overnight. Well, e-commerce has espoused at the 2015 Joy Technology and Innovation Summit here in Accra also makes it more convenient for both the buyer and seller. Well, but one other advantage it offers developing countries like our country, Ghana, is its ability to keep fraud. Derek Okosam covered the JOTIS 2015 for Joy News. Alfred Rowe, co-founder of Empire Payments, one of the speakers at the summit said, the heavy reliance on cash by most businesses in Ghana makes them susceptible to frosters. We do a lot of manual uh, business, so cash flows hand, hand on hand. So typical businessman, you've expanded in about 10 locations. For you to know how all these 10 locations are doing 
you have to call the accounts manager on site, all of them. So every time you get murky information on what's going on, because business is done on site and you are not probably using any POS device. Because we all know when a lot of cash exchanges hands, uh, people make <laughs> a lot of intentional mistakes. Mr. Rowe believes e-payment solutions offer such businesses a platform which makes their clients easily traceable. Additionally, the convenience makes the frontiers for expansion limitless. You come online, you open an account, before you load money on, we do a lot of KYC. We do back and forth emails, get to know you, pick information from you before we set you up to buy online. So this, this assures businesses who are transacting uh, online using payment systems to sort of know the customers they are dealing with. So if, let's say, Alfred Rowe pays using Empower on your shop, and for some reason something goes wrong and you want to reference as a business, Empower Payments can comfortably say, oh, Alfred Rowe is this and this and this guy. Also at the summit was the world acclaimed tech innovator, the chief executive of Soft Tribe, Herman Chinri Hesse, who offered very practical advice to young Ghanaian innovators. So you rather come up with an idea that addresses the masses, that goes to the people, rather than uh, coming up with the idea, for example, that uh, if, or if uh, customs could do so and so and so, I've written a program, they can use it. It's unlikely to succeed in the short term because the process of getting it actually into place, it's a pipe dream. It might take 10 years. It might never happen. And it will disappoint you. So that's the first one. Collaboration for Mr. Hesse was one other very important tool he says entrepreneurs should not lose sight of. It's very important to work together. One man workshop. You can't do everything. The environment is so complicated that you need relationships. So you should go out all the time, the young people, meet people and uh, network. And uh, to give you an example of uh, how, how the networks and partnerships work, our, our fastest growing product right now is Hegelo. I'm sure you guys have heard about it. It's a, an anti-arm robbery product. Now, to get a product like that going, we didn't attempt to do it ourselves. The insurance is by enterprise. The security is hidden security. Even the, the SMSs and things that control the system are from a third party. The, the security company that does it, so me, how, do I, how do I know about uh, four men and a dog, a uh, German Shepherd dog coming to somebody's house in the middle of a crime? I've never done that. We didn't try to set up a security company. So what we did was that we split the monthly revenue. We take some, we have about five partners. Everybody takes small, but everybody holds their responsibility. And this is an example in my mind of how partnerships should work in Ghana. Thrilled by the death of knowledge acquired, patrons at this year's event called for more. I mean, we need more seminars and like, you know, forums and like, I guess, workshops so people could actually understand the whole point of where technology is driving to. So we'll stop using our old methods of like paper and pen. Like this should be encouraged because it will allow us to network with these um, great minds. I call them great minds. We can learn from them because they've already been in the industry for years. I was inspired. I learned. Uh, I listened. I was educated and I loved it and I walk away with specific lessons that I can practice. For Joy News, Derek Ekol Sam. Well, without learning and education, that'll be it for the news uh, here. But next, we're going to give you what the stories as they've been displayed on the back and front pages of the various topical newspapers as we can find them around. But this time, they'll summarize on the news portal major online. Dot com. We'll try as much as possible also to look at what the topical stories are on other news portals, not only in our country, uh, on the subcontinent and elsewhere ac across the globe. So do stay on. We'll be right back.